my name is David Pierce. I'm a transhumanist. And in 1995, I wrote a manifesto, The Hedonistic Imperative, which calls for the use of biotechnology, and in particular, genetic engineering, to phase out the biology of suffering throughout the living world. The World Health Organization, in its founding constitution, defines health, quote, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now, if we are ethically serious about creating health for everyone, and by everyone I mean all sentient beings, regardless of race or species, we're going to need to tackle the biological genetic roots of suffering. It's now possible to sketch out a hundred year blueprint for phasing out the biology of suffering and replacing with life based on gradients of intelligent bliss. Just as a few months ago, Greta Thunberg addressed world leaders at the United Nations, calling them to live up to their responsibilities. I think the World Health Organization should live up to its responsibilities as set out in its founding constitution. And that's going to involve universal access to pre-implantation genetic screening and counselling for all prospective parents and in the long run to access to germline editing. Essentially the workings of the hedonic treadmill, that's the negative feedback mechanisms and the central nervous system that stop most of us being very happy for that very long mean that no amount of economic, social, political reform is going to ensure most people are happy and well for any sustained length of time. It's not just that hundreds of millions of people in the world today are either chronically or subchronically depressed. It's even people who are relatively typical by today's standards, essentially in the course of a lifetime, they undergo all manner of psychological and physical distress. And the only way to achieve good health for all is going to involve recalibrating the hedonic treadmill, ratcheting up hedonic set points and hedonic range. Now this can sound a bit like sci-fi, but it's worth studying today, today's outliers, people who have an abnormally high hedonic set point and whose lives are animated by information sensitive gradients of well-being. In the case of physical pain, although hundreds of different genes are implicated, the SCN9A gene for example, which has been described as the volume knob of pain, have dozens of different alleles, some associated with a high or low hedonic set point. Nonsense mutations with no capacity to experience pain at all. I think if one does consider it ethically justified to create new life and new babies, one has a responsibility to make sure one's kids have the highest possible quality of life. Now, in the case of mental pain, just to take as a single example, something like the COMPT gene, catecholamethyl transferase, with two variants, one is associated with a high or a low hedonic set point. Should we conserve the existing reproductive order, which is essentially a genetic crapshoot, or should prospective parents essentially choose the hedonic set point, hedonic range of their future children. It's important to conceive of the health, not just of one particular race, but also not just of one particular species. And perhaps the largest source of severe and readily avoidable suffering in the world today is undergone by non-human animals in factory farms and slaughterhouses. And Rather than talking about human happiness, I think we ought to be talking about the happiness of all sentient beings. We need an inclusive sense of us that embraces 
all sentience and that our successors will regard talk of human happiness as as jarring as if I were to start talking to you about uh, the happiness of, of whites or Caucasians. Happiness for non-humans is going to involve shutting down factory farms and slaughterhouses. Pigs, cows, sheep are in many ways akin to small children. Pig, for example, is as sentient and demonstrably as uh, sapient as, uh, as a toddler and deserve to be cared for and treated accordingly. Ending animal agriculture will dramatically reduce the likelihood of any further zoonotic viral pandemics like corona. Thanks to a revolution in CRISPR genome editing and no less critically synthetic gene drives that cheat the laws of Mendelian inheritance, it will soon be possible essentially to spread benign genes throughout entire species at minimal cost. So yeah, with a combination of synthetic gene drives, cross species, uh, fertility regulation via immunocontraception, a willingness to confront the problem of predation, it will be possible to ensure a happy biosphere, not just uh, for humans, but for non-human animals as well. In some ways, though one can define health in terms of complete physical, mental, social well-being, I think it's more fruitful to explore this idea of information-sensitive gradients of well-being, and that by aiming to preserve information sensitivity, you're not asking people to give up their existing values and preferences. I mean, this is the problem with so many traditional utopian schemes. There are winners and losers, whereas life animated by information-sensitive gradients of well-being, essentially everyone is a winner. There are, needless to say, countless pitfalls in any kind of blueprint like this and we can explore them perhaps uh, in greater depth i've done my best elsewhere but if and it's a big if we do sign up to the world health organization definition of health then a uh, hundred years is a feasible time scale for a, a blueprint for the health and happiness of all sentience Pause for a moment and try to conjure up the most wonderful, magical experience in your entire life. Now, perhaps it was very short-lived and fleeting, but in principle, there is no reason why science, technology, molecular biology can't create life that is based on radiance of intelligent bliss, magical moments, peak experiences, moreover not as something exceptional, but as just part of the normal texture of everyday life. And I think as a, as a civilization, our most morally urgent task is to phase out the biology of pain, suffering, misery and malaise. But Beyond that, we can create a biohappiness revolution, a happy biosphere based on gradients of intelligent bliss. <laughs>